to know more about the audience, we need to do research. And if we intend to talk to millions of people, this research can cost a lot of money and take a very long time, especially when involving different countries, different culture at the same time. In this video, we will see how audiences are analyzed so we get a solid understanding of what exists in the field already. The next video will dig into how to do that for our own organization. A year ago, Chatham House and Kentar Public Survey asked question to 10,000 people in Europe to understand where they would position on the spectrum of EU rejectors to federalists, how they would approach the European ID. And they came up with six segments of population and how these people react. The research itself is extremely interesting because 10,000 people is quite an uh, interesting sample already of what happens in Europe. I decided to analyze these uh, audiences in six segments on the strategic point of view. On the left spectrum, not voters or anti-EU, people who reject the idea of the European Union. They could decide to reject it by not going to vote because they don't agree with the legitimacy of having an election, or they could uh, decide to vote for anti-EU parties. These people cannot be touched. We cannot change their idea anymore about the European elections. They are already convinced for years about their own reason and opinions. But just after them, big segment that could be convinced are hesitant Europeans or austerity rebels. People who might decide to go to vote for anti-EU parties, might decide to not go vote, or decide to go vote for one party that agree with them. And these people are interesting because they represent almost a majority of the voters. These people could be very strategic in order to increase the participation to the European election. On the right side, we find the swinger voters. Uh, swinger voters are people who are frustrated but could be interested in the voting process as well. They could decide that their frustration is actually higher and they will not participate. But these are people we can still have as target audiences as a European institution to increase the number of voters. Finally, on the right, little strategic audiences, people who are already interested by the ID, contented Europeans, and on the completely uh, right part of the spectrum, federalists, people who will go to vote anyway. So if you're a European institution and you really focus on this different segment, the one you have to avoid talking to because you will lose money for no good results, are the actual super served audiences. The people who've been so convinced by the EU ID that they don't need additional messages and communication to go the next step. And the one just left of them, the contented Europeans, might be in the same case. The problem with most of the institutional communication we have is that we continue to serve super served audiences. I recently worked with a large museum of science in Europe and they completely decided to stop talking to people who already like science and already visit museums because their mission is to convince more people to visit exhibitions, not to talk to the same ones over and over again. Audiences are divided into two big determinants. We create demographic data or we create psychographic data. Demographic data like age, gender, education, all these things we know uh, how to classify groups of people are interesting. We create big blocks of audiences. But psychographics data are much more interesting. Let me dig into the New York Times way of classifying their audiences. They start with demographic data, young versus old people, male versus female. This is a classification of actually all the readers of this type of newspaper in the US. If I go on to another classification, rich versus poor, or the level of education, you add a complement to your targeting. But it's not yet enough to know how to talk to these people correctly so that they will feel good about it. The third classification is actually much more focusing on the ideology of people, their political sensitivities. And this is where you enter with psychographic data already. Because these sensitivities of anyone on the planet are linked to much uh, grander idea of who you are and how you express yourself. It, it relates to your hobbies, it relates to your friends, it relates to who you would invite to a party at your place. All these things which are much more granular, much more qualitative. A good targeting actually take in context the demographic data for creating big blocks, but in order to create messages, takes much more in uh, context the psychographics data. For the New York Times, ideology and political leaning are the main determinants. I created a 
small visualization of what I mean by political leaning and particularly in this case for college graduates against people who might not have the chance to go to college. And in the US, that's a huge distinction because you acquire a lot of your taste because you can go to college. And you see that the New York Times has a massive readership of majority of people who went to college. It doesn't mean that everyone went there, but a large proportion of them. While Fox News would have only 24% of their viewership who has been to college. And as I said, even it's quite interesting to see the two different images of this same woman who would be classified uh, in demographics with the same age and the same uh, maybe localization, you see that they dress already completely differently. So we have for each newspaper, each media in the world, a very strong knowledge of their target audiences because people have been purchasing or viewing the program for years. So we need this sort of data. Demographics are the starting points to classify a target audience. But psychographics is what offers communicants the right granularity of information so that you can actually communicate with people. So what does it mean for the European elections? Well, I cannot really answer that question without understanding you better. And I propose you to send your comments at the bottom of this video answering these four questions. What does your organization do on a daily basis? Who do you help thanks to your mission? Why do you help these people in particular? And finally, who do you miss to complete your mission? If you can answer very quickly in one paragraph these four questions, I assure you I will take the time to see with you who is your target audience and how we could eventually refine it and where to find data points so you can create a better communication plan the next time. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next week.